I have to deal every day with the fact that there's nothing that I can do to bring Kira back. <laughs> That's amazing. I love you. <laughs> Many are shocked to learn that the U.S. not only has the worst maternal mortality rate in the entire developed world, but that these rates are on the rise. It was very possible that I wouldn't have made it. And the casualness by which the medical establishment treats something like that, it's like a second trauma. The United States is one of very few countries in total and the only developed nation with a rising maternal mortality rate. Where is that, Rayburn? That's right next door, right? That's where we came from. Okay. Yeah, I just, I got pretty frustrated in my phone. <laughs> Helping members of Congress to see the women that are dying, it's just the way that they would see their mothers and their daughters and their wives. As I'm sitting there, I look down and I see the catheter coming from her bedside begin to turn pink with blood. This is in the late afternoon, around between four and five o'clock. I'm concerned, but Kira's healthy, the baby's healthy. Seven o'clock comes, eight o'clock comes, no CT scan. And at this point, we're begging, we're pleading, look, do something, please. Like, you can see that things are getting worse. It wasn't until after midnight that they finally took Kira back for surgery. Finally, they came open. The same two residents, along with the doctor who I'd never seen before, came through those doors, and um, they told us that she was gone there was nothing that they could do to save her. We had a date, everybody was planning to come for that date, but then I got preeclampsia. You know, and after about 20 hours, they finally decided that we had to do a cesarean. When I was back in my room, I started having problems with fevers. And they had said, oh, you have a urinary tract infection. And then within three hours of being home, I started spiking a terrible, terrible fever. I just had a massive infection of the wound, you know, of the incision, a massive, you know, I had an infection of the uterus. At one point I stood up and the entire incision ripped open and like blood started pouring out. It was like a horror movie. <laughs> What? Charles um, really gives everyone the opportunity to see beyond the numbers. But Charles gives us the opportunity to understand the real impact that happens to fathers, to husbands, to families when we lose the life of a mother. The only pictures that I have of Kira, so this is this actually of Kira and Langston, is when, you know, she's, he's in that blanket, yeah. My older son, Charles, who's four years old now, he said to me, Daddy, I'm ready for Mommy to come out of the sky. And, As much as I try to explain to him that mommy's not coming home, and I try and rationalize with his little mind why mommy can't come to the soccer games or why she's not there for the first day of school like his other friends' mothers, um, his little heart still has a void that I'll never be able to fill. Yes. Yeah. Roberto, Roberto? Okay. Yeah. Is everybody here for the Yes. Yes. And it does, it haunts me, the fact that if she had been Caucasian, that she might have been taken back to the OR an hour later, two hours later, that they might have made 
a little bit more effort to save her life and that she would be here with her sons today. Um, that's a difficult thing to process and that's extremely painful.